Hi everyone, I want to talk about Drupal contracture. This is not a strange topic because many people would have had the experience, whether themselves or their brothers, their uncle, or somebody close to them somehow, or you've read it you know, in the literature or anywhere. Okay, let's go. Duplicate contractual is common with flex finger or fingers. It's a progressive fibrosis of the palma fascia, that is the, the layer underneath the skin of the palm. Okay, it is a benign situation, so it's nothing to be so scared about, right? It starts as a nodule in the palm. So, to those who have been diagnosed with duplicate contracture, they will tell you that the onset of faith was, was not like this. It all started like something tiny, okay, and the palm, that like a nodule there. It's mostly painless, but sometimes it could be painful. With time, there'll be stiffness after many years, probably tens of years, like decades, okay? The nodules will grow into cores and the cause will form a kind of longitudinal band, right? And there will be gradual loss of extension. At initial time, the individual could still extend the affected finger or fingers, but with time, that will be lost. Contractions withdraw what we call metacarpophalangeal joint into a flexion mode, then, Later, when it's getting worse, it will affect what we call proximal interphalangeal joint. It may only affect the metacarpophalangeal joints only or only the proximal interphalangeal joints. Sometimes it is called duplicate disease, but it is not all the time that they are flexed. The risk factors here will be surprisingly idiopathic. And in medicine, when we say idiopathic, it means you don't know the cause. The cause is unknown. We have tried everything, we've taken the history, we've done the test, we've done the physical examination, we've done everything. We can come down on a particular cause, then we write idiopathic. But 70% of males who have relatives with duplicate contractions, they can come down with it. Then, what is that saying? It's genetic in origin, it's familiar, right? So, genetics will play a big role here. How about ethnicity? It's commoner among the Northern European descent people that have Northern Europeans as their ancestors may likely come down with this. How about gender? Common among whites, males, but it is now becoming known in women that are getting you know, older, I mean advanced aged women. Um, usually found at age greater than 50 years. It's not a disease that you should bother too much about, if not for cosmetic reasons, okay? Still on risk factors. It's possible that this individual had been diagnosed with diabetes mellitus or not yet diagnosed, but you can try to rule that out. Have a repeated unuse or vibration exposure. You know the different types of occupation that could lead to that, right? And is also associated with periodontal disease. I know what that is all about, but I'm not going into that right now. Smoking cigarette. Mm -hmm. Have a alcohol consumption. Alcohol consumption is significant here because alcohol liver disease leading to liver cirrhosis or liver failure could be a culprit here. Avatar disease. 
and this situation may be associated with autoimmune diseases. For example, could be associated with lupus, could be associated with rheumatoid arthritis, or scleroderma. Some even assume that it's associated with epilepsy, but some of us are pretty sure it's associated with certain anti-epileptic drugs, like phenobarbital. So someone is having seizure disorder and is being placed on phenobarbital or is having rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, or systemic erythromatosis, or to immune thyroiditis, or liver cirrhosis, diabetes mellitus, and smoking cigarette, and all come down with Dupuytren's contraction. What are the possible clinical features? Like I mentioned just a while ago, there'll be tickney or nodule in the palm. That is the beginning of it. Then it may be painless or painful. If you don't do anything to it, well, with time, it's going to get worse. So decades later, about 20, 30 years, there may be possibility of loss of function. Maybe associated with tenus and vitis. Okay, and the honor side in most patients is the side where you're going to pick it, affecting the fourth and fifth fingers at the beginning of it. Later on, the third finger could be affected, but it's less affected. The index and thumb are apparently spared. Okay, do I need to repeat myself about that? When we are looking for duplicin contracture and you want to be sure this is duplicin contracture and it's not something else, we check the honor side of the fourth and fifth fingers. That's where you find it most of the time. And I've mentioned you could affect metacarpophalangeal joints or postma interphalangeal joints. So if you are not finding it there, it may affect the third finger but that is not very common. It's less effective. And the index and the thumb are spared. So it may be bilateral hand involvement, mostly. And that is what we give clear that the culprit is systemic in nature. When any condition is affecting organs bilaterally, then you know that you are dealing with something systemic, okay? Recurrency is common, and you can find nodal pars and plantar fibrosis. How do we make the diagnosis? The diagnosis is made clinically. The apocrine of the skin on passive extension of metacarpophalangeal joints. Somebody is asking me what is made a cup of financial joints. Don't worry. And when I start live interaction, I will be demonstrating all those to you in, in the nearest future. Okay, you are going to find what is called a palpable longitudinal cord that will be limiting the metacarpophalangeal or postmetaphalangeal joint extension. So you will not be able to extend it. Okay, and that is why we call it contracture. There will be my tenderness that will resolve in months. Flashing contracture of the metacarpophalangia or postma interphalangia contracture with the nodules of cord will originate in the jiggies. May become permanent and there may be irreversible joint contractures at the affected joints. When handling any man with this deformity, and I've just said it, that it's not a serious issue except for the function of the hand when you've lost the function and also for cosmetic raises, right? You need to rule out possible differential diagnosis, okay? Is this diabetic choreatropathy? Is this palmar fibromatosis? Is this hamptodactyly? Could it be traumatic scars? Are we dealing with Boltzmann's ischemic contracture? How about intrinsic joint disease? 
Are we having stenosis, flexor, tenus, and ovitis? How about trigger finger? Contractor is dynamic if it is trigger finger, but the contractor is fixed with diabetic choreatropathy. When it comes to treatment, we have to explore the non-medical or non-surgical um, possibilities, depending on the presentation anyway, because some will present late, particularly men don't like going to see physicians compared to women, right? We can start with modifying tools, okay? And what we can do with us is that we are going to um, improvise. You know, the handles will be made in such a way that will suit the nature of the deformity. With the handles that will now have pipe insulation or cushion tape. We can also use gloss with padding. If we are not winning and it, the patient is not comfortable with the hand, then we'll go a step further with intralitional triopsinolone acetonine. That is a steroid. And we'll highlight the the chloride to relieve the pain. If we're not winning, then we can move further with open fasciotomy. That is, you cut off the fascia, okay? Or needle fasciotomy, you open the layers of the fascia inside, hmm? fasciotomy, or percutaneous fasciotomy, that is, you go through the palm, the skin, and then you open now the fascia there. You can also use Clostridia collagenase injection or radiotherapy to prevent progression. So that, you know, remember I've said it that it's going to take decades and the day goes by months, weeks, years, it's going to get worse with time. So radiotherapy will prevent that. The prognosis. Prognosis is variable because there's variable cause. There's possibility of regression in 10% of affected cases. Some will have little incapacitation, while some will have functional impairment. Progression could be as high as 50% if there is no treatment. And no treatment can actually stop the process. All treatments are palliative. But it is going to be advisable that if you are picking the nodules, or the nodule, and there is only one, report to your doctor on time so that the progression could be slowed down and that will help you to maintain your function till as long as you live here. Okay, with that, I've come to the end of this presentation. Kindly subscribe to my channel. Thanks for listening. If you subscribe to my channel, you will get my presentations immediately they are published. Thank you. I appreciate it.